I wrote a, linguist a linguistics paper on Doublelift. Enjoy! An analysis of the linguistic tendencies of a professional gamer. Me. This guy is... This guy's using me as his fucking college thesis. Okay, let's see here. Eve Young, Peter Pang, primarily known by his online alias Doublelift, is the professional gamer, streamer, and YouTuber. Pang is known for being the most decorated North American player in North American professional League of Legends scene. Born a working class Chinese immigrant family who was raised in Mission Viejo. True. He grew up speaking Western American English, but due to his heavy involvement in gaming and internet culture since his youth, many of his linguistic tendencies is influenced by the tendencies of those spheres. Very true. I talk like a fucking complete degenerate. Alright, let's see what this guy wrote in his essay. I hope he got an A. Gaming culture has several linguistic tendencies, including casual and frequent use of profanity, the frequent creation of slang terms, and in some cases, the uses of extreme and offensive language. He's not wrong. He's not wrong. All right, boys. Linguistic tendencies of gaming culture differ significantly across its various communities. Communities are divided by game genre and sometimes more specifically by the specific game. Pang was a player of League of Legends, the most popular multiplayer online battle arena game worldwide. While the community of the game is known to be more profane than the general population, the extremity and offensiveness of the language is considered to be mild compared to other communities. Um... Yeah, I mean, like, if we're talking about the internet, right? Then, then I think that's definitely true. League is is definitely mild compared to some of the more insane corners of the internet and just in corners of gaming in general. In this paper, I will outline double linguistic tendencies as influenced by his involvement in gaming culture. I will discuss how he created a novel slang term by adding a bound morpheme to a pre-existing term to draw out a phase structure for one of his sentences and analyze his usage of profanity and how it's affected by his gaming influences. What is a bound morpheme? Any linguistics nerds in here? Yeah, Dota 2 can teach you a lot of polite Russian words. Bound morpheme. What is this? Let's go to images. Something I can understand. A picture book. Word. Kind. Number of morphemes. One. Kindly. Two. Unkind, unkindness, three. Okay, so it's like prefixes and suffixes to a word. Is that right? A free morpheme can stand alone and be used as an independent word of the language. A bound morpheme cannot stand alone or be used as an independent word on the language. Oh, okay. So it's like a word that can't be said without the li or like the, like the prefix of the suffix. Okay. Phrase? Okay, here we go. I was up here. Grammatical features. Pan uses the term comebackable in this YouTube video while playing when playing a game of League of Legends. The term is used to mean that the game the team is still able to recover and win a match from a losing state. The linguistics origins of comebackable stems from the phrase come back, which is a phrasal verb often used in sports to mean recovering from a deficit. Gaming culture adopted the phrase comeback and began to use the word as a noun to refer to instances of coming back in matches. Discussing Linguistic standards in gaming culture is difficult as it is almost entirely verbal in its usage, as most conversations occur through voice calls or professional commentary. However, most instances of the noun version come back shorten the phrase to a single word, come back. Uh, this is making my head spin. I'm saying the word come back way too many times, the word come. Pang, along with his peers in League of Legends gaming sphere, has adopted come back as the noun that is standardly used to refer to the winning from a losing state. Another word, winnable, was the adjective generally used to mean games in losing states can still be won. Peng decided to subvert the standards of using winnable and decided to use a bound inflectional derivative derivational. I almost said derivational. Hold on, hold on. We're going to get our nerd hats on right now. We're going to get our fedoras on. Decided to add the bound inflectional derivational morpheme, able, to come back to create the new word comebackable below is a morphology tree for comebackable oh my god this guy is actually sweating his ass off for this essay it's not even funny this essay is quite true <laughs> oh this is insane stuff this is insane stuff phrase structure i genuinely appreciate these people uh i genuinely appreciate those people <clears throat> um <clears throat> 
So what is this for? I have no idea. Four, profane and abusive language. Pang primarily uses two profane words. Fucking shit. There is little variability in the level of profanity Pang uses. He uses profanity very casually, generally does not use it to with the intent to offend, although he sometimes uses it to signal anger, anger or aggression. Very true. Very true. And I definitely don't. Uh, I actually need to clean it up, guys, because, you know, I'm 30 years old now, and the fact that I'm using uh, profane words and making, uh, you know, like, occasionally, like, just, like, dropping edgy jokes, um, uh, you know, uh, the older you get, the, the less that, that that becomes the norm. So, not that I want to be, uh, you know, completely like, devoid of personality and stuff, but, you know, it's, it's pretty fucking cringe. Oh, wait, I just did it again. <laughs> yeah there you go <laughs> like i just need to clean up my my uh my speech let's put it that way <laughs> damn it this guy's good this guy's good all right let's see here paying always often uses fuck in its adjective form of fucking which he uses as an expletive to signal a greater degree of something <laughs> for example he says you fucking moron in this video to signal anger and intensify the extent of the offensiveness of moron Yes, true. He often uses shit in the phrase oh shit as an interjection to signal surprise. Fuck and shit are drawn from sex and body functions, respectively. It is notable that Peng does not use any slurs in his profanity. This is likely influenced by his outspoken attitude against racism and discrimination. Peng's usage of profanity reflects the influences of gaming and internet culture. It is culturally normal. I mean, like, this is just normal, guys. Like, I think, like, most, I would say, like, in general, like, most people who are chronically online in their 20s, teens, or 30s, they are profane, but like, like, you know, crossing the line into racism and discrimination and like slurs and stuff is definitely not the norm. So, I mean, like, yeah, it's influenced by my, like, yeah, I'm, I'm a, I don't support racism or discrimination, but I, I think like also this is like super normal. Uh, Pang's use of profanity reflects her influences of gaming and internet culture. It is culturally normal for profanity to be used very casually in gaming culture and Pang has adopted such tendencies. The profanity Pang uses can be used by people of all genders and ages. Uh, okay, yeah. <clears throat> let me just uh, let me just put an asterisk there. I I don't I don't support that you uh, try to copy the way that I talk. I think uh, you know it's time for me to mature up a little bit. While Peng has very com while Peng very commonly uses profanity in daily speech, it is notable that when he is set on when he is set on set. I'm sorry, I can't, I can't read right now. I'm having a brain fart. For a professional match or filming sponsored content, he does not use profanity to convey a professional tone. Yes, true. And uh, like when I'm like more thoughtful about what I'm saying, I definitely try to <clears throat> not only remove filler words. So I will say stuff like uh or like even in my retirement video. Um, I just did it again. I just I just said, um, you know, a lot of people would just pause. They would say even in my retirement video. And then they would move on with their sentence after they've thought about what to say next. Like that kind of stuff, I try to do as little as possible when I'm being recorded, but it's just such an ingrained, I mean, t t talking is just something you do subconsciously almost, like the way that you talk. So I don't like it, but it's so hard to fix. I just need, I need to make an active effort actually to do it. Just to remove the filler words, not talk, not talk professionally, but just talk like more articulately. It's Irvine speak, dude. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is about how I default, like how my, how my default was. I guess it is actually where I grew up and stuff. Thought fillers. Very descriptive paper, not enough supporting arguments and synthesis of ideas. Seven out of 10. Yeah, no, he didn't get a C, hopefully. I hope he got an A plus. Um, hope you got an A, buddy. <laughs> Boom. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's actually, this is actually pretty funny. Like th this entire, oh shit. He also posted it not only on my sub, but he posted it on, on, uh, on the league sub as well. Jesus. I, I didn't know you could do essays on stuff like this. I'm not going to watch the videos. Hell no. That is not an A paper. No way. I said I hope you got an A, not not that yeah, well, I hope so. That's a C level undergrad paper, not gonna lie. Oof. Yo bro, come on. <laughs>